and in today's video we're going to talk about a software called Train Trace 700. This is a software that is used to calculate uh, the heat load uh, through a building and uh, this can be used to calculate the different uh, CFM requirements or heat losses through uh, the different areas in a building and uh, to start this software um, you're going to see a project navigator screen uh, such as this one here and starting from the top to the bottom this is actually the workflow uh, to setting up the load calculations and so the first thing we need to do is enter the project information so we double click that and we'll call it load calc example as the project name and the location uh, we're gonna just randomly select this address 46 uh, Madison uh, Street in Brooklyn New York and then we're just gonna hit OK and that'll save the uh, project name here next we need to select the weather information for the building that we're doing the load calculations for okay and here's the zone uh, we're gonna click this red area for New York City and we're gonna select this right here because Brooklyn is actually the closest to uh, New York City uh, either one is fine uh, we'll just go with a LaGuardia and hit OK. So now the weather information is set to New York LaGuardia. Now next is we need to create the templates uh, that are going to be used uh, in the load calculations. Uh, the reason for the template is so that once we set uh, the template it will automatically apply to the different rooms that we'll be creating. So this avoids the unnecessary a step of constantly inputting uh, the values for each room. So to start off the template, if you look on the bottom, there's several different tabs where we can uh, set the different templates to. Uh, we're going to start with the first one, internal load. Up here on the top, uh, we can create a name for it. Uh, in this case, we'll just keep it at default, but if you wanted to create a different template, you can just hit, hit this, new, and then you could create, you know, another name for another template. But we're just going to uh, change the default uh, template. So we're going to leave the description as default. Now, okay, now Trace uh, Train has a drop-down menu for people and the different rooms here. And uh, for each one of these rooms, Trace gives a certain sensible and latent load based on the typical activity in that room. So for example, if you have um, a library, the default is 245 and a latent load of 155. Now if you go a little bit higher than that to let's say manufacturing, the sensible and latent loads go up because the activity of a person typically in the manufacturing is a little bit more than at a library where they're just sitting down still reading a book so we're uh, for for the office space uh, the typical default value that we use is somewhere in between the two uh, and we're going to use none and just input a value of 250 for sensible and 250 for latent uh, the density we're going to keep it at zero and depending on the room, uh, we'll add the number of people to the load count. So we're going to default uh, the people quantity to be zero. But if you look here, you can do it based on square footage um, uh, per person. The schedule for cooling only design, this is what we're going to keep it at. Uh, all these other ones, uh, they are applying this people load for a different load. So let's say we pick one for example. Uh, that'll just mean that they're only going to apply the people load 
for a particular time in the day. But in our case, we're just going to default it at being 100% of the time. Um, the people load will be applied if there is a people load to a space. So we're going to uh, pick it at cooling only design. Okay, we're not going to add this to uh, heating. Okay, the workstation, we're, you can keep it at zero workstations per person. And for lighting, we'll, we're going to keep it at one watt per square foot, which is an average watt uh, output per square foot for lights. So we're going to leave it at one watt per square foot of heat uh, from the lights. And again, we're just going to keep the schedule at cooling only design. Miscellaneous loads, we're going to keep it at zero as default and once you're done with that we can go to the next tab airflow okay so now in this airflow template uh, this is being used to calculate how much outdoor air is being supplied to the space okay for the main supply and the auxiliary supply we're just going to leave it at to be calculated and let the software you know do the calculations to come up with those numbers and just keep it at zero for cooling and zero for heating. We're not providing any uh, ventilation from this field here. What we're going to do is provide infiltration, which is um, kind of like ventilation, but it's, um, it's not an actual number that we're setting it to. So we're just going to say that uh, the construction is going to be a uh, loose average or a neutral average construction and it's going to default to the air changes per hour uh, based on that type of construction and this just means uh, it circulates 0.6 uh, air changes meaning the entire volume of that particular room uh, in one hour will be replaced with air so for most jobs, we can keep it at this value here for residential projects. Next, we're going to go into the thermostat tab. In this tab, we're going to set the cooling dry bulb temperature to be at 72 degrees, which is the standard uh, setting for cooling. Some people like it at 74 or higher, but the the average would be about 72 uh, degrees so we're gonna set the design parameters to be at 72 for cooling and for heating it's gonna be a little bit less and the reason for that is if your heating is higher than the cooling then you're opposing each other right so you can't have heating at 72 example uh, and cooling at 70 because in that case you're uh, opposing the cooling and heating of the equipment. So the heating is going to be slightly less than the cooling. So we're going to set that at 70. Uh, relative humidity, we'll keep it at 50. And we could keep the cooling drift point and heating drift point to these numbers. Okay, next is the construction. Uh, now, in the construction template, these values we're using has to be in accordance with the energy code for the building we're doing the load calculation for. Uh, in this example, we're doing it for New York City. So we need to follow the New York City Energy Code. Okay, so for the construction, we need to follow the uh, values that are listed in the New York City Energy Code. Uh, so for example, for the slab, we're just gonna leave it at the default for four inch um, HW concrete and that's going to be the u factor there for the roof we're going to go back to the energy code and um, we're going to use the highest value that we could find for the u so new york city is four and we're going to use um, the highest value for the u for the roof area and the highest one i see is uh, three this one right here 0 0.035 so we're going to default to this 
Uh, as you can see, you know, there's two columns, group R and all others. We're, we're going to set the template to be the higher of the two so that it will, uh, it could be used for, uh, both cases, whether it's a group R or some other case like an office building. So in this case, we'll set up 0.035 right here for the roof. Now for the wall, we're going to go back and look for the wall above grade. Uh, we're going to pick the highest U value in the two columns. All right, and the highest number in this case would be this 0 0.099. And we're going to round that up to 0.1. So we're going to put in 0.1 here. Okay, now for the uh, partition, we're just going to leave it at the default for a 3 quarter inch gypsum frame. Now this partition value will come into play if you have an interior space that is uh, separated by this partition wall and uh, the two zones that it's separating has a temperature gradient across it. Uh, for most load calculations, we consider each space to be at the same interior temperature. So there'll be no heat transfer across a partition. But uh, if there was, this partition U value would be used in the calculation. For the glass type, we're going to use a U value for glass. That's going to be the highest one among here. And the highest U value I see is this 0.4. Okay. So we're going to use 0.4 for the window. And the shading coefficient formula is 0.87 is equal to the solar heat gain coefficient. So we're going to use this value here. Okay. A PF less than 0.2. PF stands for projection factor or uh, if there is a shade over the window. Now if there is no shade, which is the case we have to consider, since we, we don't know if there is going to be some sort of tree or a neighboring building that will provide shading. And even if there is a tree or a building, you know, at a later time that tree or building could be removed. So we don't uh, want to ever consider uh, the shading as uh, being there. So in that case, we're going to use this PF and it's 0.36. So if you divide by 0.87, we're going to get 0.87. Uh, that is going to give you point four one three. So we're going to round that to 0.41 for shading coefficient for the window. Next, we have to go to the skylight. So the window has a U factor of 0.48 and a solar heat gain coefficient of 0.38 divided by 0.87 will give us 0.4368. Now we're just going to round that to 4, 4. So we have skylight at 0.44 and a U value of 0.48. Now we also have a door that we need to U factor for. And, and that is actually under this section here and the U factor would be 0.5 so we have 0.5 and the shading coefficient for a door is this value here okay so the shading coefficient for a door and the window will be the same and the skylight is a little bit higher now for the height uh, of the wall and the floor to floor and the plenum is going to be set at 10, 10 and 2 for this example. 
what these values mean is if you have uh, a floor to floor height the distance from here to the floor surface is the floor to floor height or the wall height now the plenum which is represented by this would have to be inputted into the load calcs and the plenum is just the space above the room ceiling and the bottom of the floor above or the slab above So in this case, the wall is 10, floor to floor is 10, and we're just going to keep the plenum at 2 feet. For the room, we're just going to leave it all at default here. And there's nothing you need to do to this tab. And you could close. Okay, so next in the list is creating the rooms. So we just click this right here. And start adding the rooms. We're going to start off with the basement floor here. Okay, and when we are labeling the rooms at, uh, into this software, we're going to start off with the floor name first, and then the room ID, which is labeled on the plans. And it's important to uh, create the room description with the floor name first, because after the load calc is uh, completed, and we calculate the result, it's going to generate a report. And it's going to all be grouped together alphabetically or numerically. So uh, if you start off the room description with the floor a uh, particular room is in, it'll just be easier to find that room. So we're going to start with this room here, bedroom 008, which is in the basement. So we're going to start off with the floor name and call it uh, bedroom. 008 and it's important to use the exact ID for the room that's on the plans so that later on if you wanted to find the data for this room you'll know you're looking at the right information uh, in the report as long as this room tag is exactly the same so we're gonna call it bedroom 8008 and in this single sheet, you're going to see the different tabs on the bottom here for rooms, roof, wall, as well as the other ones here. And the single sheet is actually a summary of the data that you'll be putting into these other tabs. Uh, for example, this here is the data in here. For example, if I make this 100, it'll show up as 100. If I change this here as 120, it'll also change it here in 120. So this is just a summary of the information that we'll be inputting into each one of these tabs. So I'm not going to even work on this tab. I'm just going to start with room. So the data that you put into the length and width just has to multiply to be the square footage of the space. Uh, so the simplest way to do this is to make one of these values 1 and the other to be the square footage. So here is 120. So I'll just make this 120. Uh, so that the two values being multiplied would equal the square footage of the space. The information on this tab that you see in red are representing the values that we're putting to the template. So here, if you see it in red, these values were in the template that we just created. So the floor to floor is 10, plenum is 2, all this could remain. And the uh, settings that we have were cooling at 72, which is a standard. Uh, heating also 70 being a standard, as well as relative humidity being at 50%. Okay, now we're going to go to the roof. Okay, all this could remain the same. Uh, in this case, we are in the basement, so there is no roof, so we're not going to input any values for the roof. But if we were in the floor uh, number three, we would have a roof, in which case we would put in uh, a new roof here by clicking this and then adding the information for the roof. Okay, for example, um, 
if the entire floor was covered by a roof, then we would just say the roof area equals floor. Uh, in some cases, the roof isn't the uh, same floor area as the floor below it, in which case we would just input the actual area of the uh, roof here. So in this case, we don't have a roof, so I'll just delete that. Now we go to the walls. Uh, the walls represent the walls that are uh, part of the building envelope, which means that it is uh, separating the inside to the exterior. So in our case, that wall would be this wall here, since this is the outdoors. And we wouldn't consider this wall as being the envelope wall. Right, because it is separating two interior spaces, which means that there is no temperature difference between the two, which means there's no um, uh, temperature heat transfer um, across uh, this wall here. We also would consider this wall uh, an exterior wall, although there is an adjacent building that is right next to this building here. Rep represented by this line here as well as here. It says existing three-story building not part of this filing which is on this side and also on this side. So this building is in between two buildings uh, but we will still consider this an exterior wall because uh, the code in New York City is uh, there needs to be some sort of air gap uh, between the two buildings and as the buildings get higher that air gap uh, becomes a little bit larger and I believe it starts off as one inch and then as it gets higher and higher the building the air gap would increase uh, slightly it's like one inch per every uh, s uh, number of feet and um, to account for the possibility of that airspace being in between two adjacent buildings we will consider this as an exterior wall So we will need to input those walls. To do that, we hit this here, new wall, and we will start with this one first. So I'm gonna call that the south wall. South because we have the north arrow here, so this will be the south and this will be the east. So the south wall has a length of 10 foot, nine inches, but I'm gonna simplify it and just call it 11 feet. And the tilt is basically zero means vertical and the direction is the degrees where north is zero and going clockwise uh, the degrees increase. So east will be 90 degrees, south will be 180 degrees and west will be uh, 270 degrees. And if you are in doubt just go to help and in the index you type in the tab here and you'll see you know since we are in the wall tab you could just type in wall and it'll list all the components of that here so you'll see the tilt is here and the direction is here so once you click tilt you'll see here it explains vertical is 0 and horizontal is 90 if you go to direction you'll see the north is zero and as you go clockwise the degrees will increase so east is 90 south 180 and west is 270 so in our case we would just put the tilt is zero for vertical direction in this case is the south so that's 180 degrees and that'll be wall number one also in wall number one we do have openings we have a door as well as one window so we're gonna start off with a new opening and we'll start with the window first so the length would be what we have here which is two foot ten inches and just to simplify I'm just gonna call that three feet but if you want to be precise you would have to make the ten inches uh, as a decimal uh, uh, 
of a foot, so it's going to be 10 divided by 12, which would be 0.83. So if you want it to be exact, you could say 0.83. Okay, a little bit more precise. Um, and the height would be from the elevation here for the basement. The height would be 57. So if you take 57 divided by 12, you get 4.75 feet. So you will put that into here. And the quantity is 1. The U factor and shading coefficient are red because these are the values in our template. Now we also have to input the other opening, which is uh, the door here. So we go back here and we click new opening and we click door. Now the length will be here, three foot one inch. I'll just simplify it and just call it three. The height of the door would be from the <clears throat> Uh, elevation which is 80 and 80 divided by 12 would be 6.67 feet and the quantity is 1 again these red numbers mean uh, these are the values in the template that we set up and that will cover the south wall now we have another wall to input which would be the uh, east wall. So we would just go to new wall and we call that the east wall. Uh, the length of that is 12 feet and the direction, tilt is 0 since it's vertical and the direction would be 90. And we would hit apply and that's it there's no openings there now the internal load we're gonna leave it at 2 since it's a bedroom uh, and the maximum number of people in that room uh, typically could be 2 so I'm just putting a 2 there these are all default values uh, the lighting 1 watt per square foot is a good default value to use miscellaneous um, here I'm gonna add one computer so approximately 250 watts would be okay and that's it airflow everything here it can be left the way it is okay we're just providing some infiltration 0.6 air changes meaning 0.6 uh, so 60 percent of the volume of this space would be replaced with outside air Right, sixty percent of that volume per hour would be uh, replaced with the outside air, um, and everything could be left the way it is. Partition floor, partitions just means uh, you know the um, interior walls, and we would only input something into that if there is a temperature gradient between two interior spaces across an interior room, right? Because uh, let's say this room was some sort of storage room and we didn't care about air conditioning it or anything, right? So this room might be a little bit colder than this room. So in that case, we might say this room, uh, there'll be some sort of heat transfer across it. But uh, in this case, we're just gonna keep all interior spaces uh, being the same temperature. So we're not going to put anything into this tab here. Now we need to go to the next room. Once we set up one room, we can just hit um, in the single sheet. We can go here and just hit copy. Okay, and when we hit copy, um, it'll transfer some of the data over. So we'll go into this one, bedroom 001. So we'll call it with the floor name first, bedroom 001. And we'll just go through the whole thing again. So in this case, the room, 
would be 100 square feet. So the, these two numbers multiplied has to equal 100 square feet. So I'm just going to make it simple and just call it 101. Everything is the same. There's no roof. The wall in this case, we have a an actual, uh, we have a north wall, I mean a uh, south wall. The length here is 7 foot 10 inches, so I'm just going to call that 8. Direction would be 180. And the opening, we have one window and no door. So this door, we're going to click this and then we're going to delete it. Delete the opening. And we're just left with the wall, uh, uh, the window opening, which is 4.75. Just to double check, I'm going to go back here.